ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, werewolves and pirates and alligators and hamsters and poodles and fish and ditch diggers and marine biologists and anybody else who's watching, welcome once again to the Mask Fan Attic. That's the Attic Above Horror Hotel in Chatfield where we discuss interesting old Halloween masks. Uh, for the edification and befuddlement of all you collectors and Halloween enthusiasts out there. Tonight in the attic, look what we have. This is a really, a real oldie moldy. This is from the mid to late 1970s is when this was out. It's from, uh, well now they're called Zagoni, but back in the day they were called Be Something Studios. So this is a Be Something Studios Vampire Bat. And you probably would never have guessed in a million years that that was a vampire bat without me telling you so. But Now, uh, when this guy came out, this was really a cool and dramatic and fresh kind of a thing. Uh, there had been a lot of werewolf and wolfman masks with fur that were kind of similar, but nobody had done one that looked more like a bat than a wolf. So this was, once again, pretty original. A lot of, uh, a lot of impressive very impressive, uh, uh, innovative, and, and original uh, work coming from Be Something. And that's true even today in the Zagoni era, really. Very influential and very nice quality. Now this guy, uh, probably one of their easier ones to make because there wasn't a lot of paint on him. He was just black all over except for the teeth, which sometimes had a little blood on them, and a little bit of red on the uh, gums, and a little bit of red around the eyes, and a little bit of red in the nostrils, but just just minimal, just barely. A little bit of red here and there, mostly just black all over that goes with the fur. Cool looking mask, very dramatic, really works, very uh, organic looking, and has character, has personality. Now if you're one of those humans who only uh, is interested in masks used in movies, you should still be interested in the old Be Something Vampire Bat because he turned up in a movie, he's probably turned up in several because um, I think uh, back then movies that had costume party sequences. I think I saw him in something at a costume party, but I don't remember what it was because I'm old and confused. But one thing I do remember that in the 1979 forgotten and obscure feature, Screams of a Winter Night, that's right, Screams of a Winter Night, the vampire bat mask was in there. And well, now Screams of a Winter Night is a movie that doesn't make any sense whatsoever, but it's extremely creepy. I was impressed with it. I've always found it to be a very scary one. Uh, if you haven't seen it, uh, you should look for it and watch it alone, in the dark, with the lights out. Something caught on. Hang on. Let me take this piece of electrical wire off my uh, shirt. There, yeah, there we go. <clears throat> what was I talking about? Oh yeah, Attics. Um, very scary movie, Screams of a Winter Night. 1979, very uh, low budget amateur, made by some uh, kids in their 20s in uh, Louisiana, I believe. And Screams of a Winter Night was unique because it was the first movie to dramatize what would later become known as urban legends. Now the term urban legends had been around since at least the late 60s, I guess, but nobody really called the, those stories urban legends until a few years after this movie. Um, when in the early 80s some books came out that were called uh, urban legends, you know, The Vanishing Hitchhiker and other urban legends, things like that, then the term urban legends kind of went into common uh, parlance in the language and people know, today know what that term means and today there have been a ton of movies based around what we now call urban legends, but nobody really would have known that term except for a handful of college professors in 1979 when this came out. And, uh, well, uh, in the movie, people tell stories in a creepy old uh, cabin in the woods uh, during a snowstorm. And the stories are reenactments of things you hear, uh, well, urban legends, early ones, like uh, the guys that were uh, making a bet where they had to stay the night in the haunted uh, building, and in the morning the guy's hair had turned white. That's an old story. Another one about uh, the couple on Lover's Lane and they run out of gas and the guy goes off and the woman hears something scraping on the top of the car. They did that one. Uh, just that kind of thing. And again, they don't make a lot of sense and the production values are nothing to sing about, but wow, is it a scary, creepy movie. Maybe it's just me. I find it really scary even though it doesn't uh, offer a lot of um, plot complexity. It's very moody, very atmospheric. 
And anyway, uh, this guy, the, the, the B something studios vampire bat, turns up briefly in a scene where the guy who is the inevitable jerk in every group scares the girls by looking up in the window with this mask on, right there. And I don't know why people always hate the guy who scares people with the mask. You know, every, every horror movie has that guy, and then the other guys are like, Hey, man, come on. That's not cool, man. That's messed up. Come on, man. Just because the girl... And the girls are poor sports. The girls are like, Don't ever do that again. I hate you. Because the guy put a mask on. That's the way they write those movies. But anyway, um, this was used to prank the girls. And by the way, uh, that was also back in the days before prank was used as a verb. Prank was still a noun back then. It would be playing a prank on the girls. But today, people say you pranked. You know what I mean. Anyway, Vampire Bat, uh, to my knowledge, has not been reissued over the years. I don't think he's been available since uh, the early to middle 1980s. Early 80s he was still around. I don't think they've ever reissued him since then. Uh, check on their website and maybe they will reissue him any day now. I don't know, but it's been a long time as of this uh, recording. Thank you for watching and good lord.